You're watching Brockton Community Access. Mark Lindy, your host. And tonight we have candidates for Ward 3 City Council on Brockton Community Access's coverage of the City of Brockton preliminary election on September 19th. I have in studio with me on, on my panel, I have uh, Steve Foote, the former chairman of the Brockton Democratic City Committee, who is now an unenrolled independent voter. And we have Councilor Shana Barnes, who is a member of the Democratic City Committee and aide to Congressman Lynch, as well as being a outgoing city councilor at large. In studio for um, the candidates that are running, we have Reverend Marlon Green, who is running for a second time for Ward 3. We have uh, current city councilor Dennis Aneri, uh, who is running for his, um, I'm going to say 12, it's 12 years? It will be for, uh, for the 14th. It'll be my eighth term, which eighth will term. be 16. Okay, and we have Tina Cardoso, who's new to the political scene in Brockton. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with opening statements, and we did a really scientific uh, drawing out of a baseball <laughs> helmet. And uh, the first person that drew uh, for the one-minute opening statement is uh, Reverend Marlon Green. Reverend Green. Mark, thank you, and thank you to BCA for the service that you uh, provide to our wonderful uh, community. My name is Reverend Marlene Green. I'm a 15-year um, uh, resident of the city of Brockton. I am a minister. I've been a minister uh, serving uh, several uh, communities for the past um, 15 years. Um, I've uh, lived in Brockton with my wife and our two boys who are um, students in the Brockton public schools. I bring to this uh, campaign over 15 years of community service as a clergy member and serving in several different uh, communities throughout New England. I also bring to this campaign over uh, 15 years of uh, professional research experience in the healthcare industry. And I'm very honored to be a candidate for um, City Council to represent our great Ward, Ward 3. Brockton is our city and it is also our home. And I'm hoping in this race to be able to represent your interests, uh, your voice, and to make Brockton our great home again. Okay, Councilor Neary. Thank you, Mark, and I want to thank uh, the staff here at BCA uh, for hosting this evening. I totally appreciate it. As always, they do an outstanding job, and they need to be commended. Uh, if it wasn't for them, some of the news stories that happen here in the great city of Brockton would never be heard, so I do appreciate that. And good evening. My name is Dennis Aneri. I am the present city councilor from Ward 3, and I have served in that capacity for the last 14 years. I don't think I'm a stranger to the community at all, having lived here my entire life, 63 years worth, born here in August of 1954, lived in, and was raised in Ward 3 for several years before I moved to the east side of Brockton, and then came back to uh, Ward 3 just about 15, 16 years ago, and I ran for the open seat of city council from Ward 3, and I took Jerry Cassidy's place when he uh, uh, stepped down as the uh, president of City Council of Ward 3 at that point in time. So it's a great honor for me to be here. It's, it's always a great pleasure to have um, competition. I do not stray away from competition. It, it's always health healthy. But I just want to uh, let you know that I am a candidate for re-election, and uh, hopefully I'll be re-elected uh, to serve the people of Ward 3 as I've done for the past 14 years. Thank you. Okay, and Tina. Hi, my name is Tina Cardoso. I am also a 15-year um, resident of Brockton. Thank you, Mark Lindy and Brockton Community Access for having me tonight. It's a pleasure to be here with the sitting council and uh, Marlon Green. Um, this is all new to me, like you said, Mark. Uh, I'm new to the political scene, but what's not new to me is my community service, my experience in the community. I'm a nurse 20 years now. Uh, having worked in underserved communities, and I'm also a president of a nonprofit, nonprofit organization that seeks to help folks in the community around mental illness, youth violence, drug addiction. So I bring in a lot of that experience, that connection with the community, that ability to, you know, folks can relate to me. And I'm hoping to uh, be able to make a difference in the city. Brockton's already a great city. I feel like more folks like myself need to be involved. Um, and I, the demographics also has changed a lot, so I bring in some of that um, con uh, connection, that relationship. Thank you. Okay, thank you all for being here. It's, I want to thank you also for putting your name on the ballot as someone that's done that myself. It takes a lot away mm -hmm. from your family and your friends and uh, 
your life in general, but service is a wonderful thing. We'll start off with the questions. Steve it would be first. Uh, thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, now that regulated use of bare water is legal and the only pot facility in Brockton is on West Chestnut Street in your ward, uh, another facility wants to open a couple of doors down from them and the current facility wants to expand its hours. Would you vote for more licenses for retail pot sales and do any of you use marijuana or any other drugs? Okay, we're going to start with Marlon, Reverend Green. So I'll start with the, uh, the latter uh, question first. Have I ever used uh, marijuana? Um, and, the and the answer is no, I've never used it. Um, to your first uh, question on whether I would um, vote to um, uh, um, expand or to grant additional uh, licenses to um, marijuana uh, facilities in the other city, and the uh, simple answer is no, I would not. Um, and my reason for that is uh, I think we already have enough um, challenges in the city of Brockton um, with um, illegal drugs um, and crimes of different um, sort. Um, this is just not the community. It is not the place for that um, type of business. And with the other uh, struggles that we're having uh, with uh, managing the, uh, the, uh, the criminal um, activity that we have in Brockton, um, such a facility just would not aid um, in us um, getting that under control. So again, I would not um, vote to expand that in Brockton. Tina? So I would not vote to, for, as a nurse and someone who uh, knows the challenges of uh, drug addiction firsthand. I've worked with that population for nearly 20 years. I would not vote to expand uh, the marijuana. And no, I have never used marijuana. I prefer my uh, red wine. <laughs> there we go. But um, no, I definitely would not vote to expand marijuana. Hey, well, thank you, and uh, I guess I'm with Tina on that. I, I never use marijuana either, and I enjoy my red <laughs> wine too. Um, but in any case, if, if you recall, uh, medical marijuana was voted by the uh, voters of the city of Brockton by 76 percent, um, uh, unanimously 76 percent of the voters of the city of Brockton, 78 uh, percent of the voters of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. That's how we ended up with medical marijuana coming into some of our cities and towns. It was also indicated that every um, city and town in certain areas would have a medical marijuana facility. Uh, Plymouth County was going to have five, Brockton was going to have two. And, and what we did at that particular time, and I was um, a part of the process because they were looking for a, a business district area uh, to where we would locate the medical marijuana, we came up with the overlay district which was what you see on West Chestnut Street. And as you know, we have one facility that's been up and operating since its time, it's three years, and we just approved, um, or I shouldn't say we, it just went through um, zoning that there's also approval for another location at another, at another corner. And I already indicated as the council from Ward 3, there is no more room for an expansion. If there's an expansion, we have to look somewhere else. So as far as I'm concerned, we have what we need in the city of Brockton right now for medical marijuana. And that goes for uh, the uh, uh, small shops that would sell recreational? That's marijuana? going to be a different issue altogether, Steve. That's going to be a different type of discussion of how that's going to work. We don't know how that's going to come at us yet. The state hasn't finished writing all and how it's going to be. They passed different steps to it, but we don't know how it's going to affect us out here um, in, in Brockton and, and how it could. I, I, I okay. can't have an answer that the gentleman that's in place could okay. want to expand that, but that I don't know how that's going to fit in yet. Fair enough. Did either one of you want to add to that second part of the question? No. Okay. So we will go uh, to Shana. Um, we'll start the first uh, question in the order. It will be Dennis, then Marlon. Oh, well, then this is a group question, actually. Oh, this first. is a, okay. Yeah. Okay, wasn't sure. Um, in your campaign, and you know, as a veteran retiring campaigner myself, um, you go out, knock doors, make phone calls, answer phone calls, get emails, make <clears> emails, <throat> making contact with your constituents and the people that you're looking to serve. Um, what has been one or two major, major issues of the residents of Ward 3 that have come across uh, your, your ears or, or, or to you through this particular campaign cycle? First would be Councilor Neri. I'm yes. first? Yes. Well, um, thank you, Shana, for asking that question. And uh, I guess uh, one who's been campaigning for a good, good many years and Campaigns change over the years as well, but you, you pretty much stick to the same 
type of strategy, though a little different now over the years. We have social media, so it, it does uh, allow you to do some other things that you couldn't do before. But mm -hmm. right now is the city councilor who is out in the neighborhoods, and, and uh, I travel the neighborhoods, um, and, you know, I hold ward meetings, so I get a lot of feedback when I hold my ward meetings as well. Uh, but right now, as I've gone um, through the neighborhoods, is starting, you know, the process of, of campaigning for September 19th. The biggest concern that a lot of people have right now, not enough police protection in the neighborhoods. We're not doing enough work in our neighborhoods. I've had people even say to me, aren't we worrying a little bit too much still with you know, the new downtown and forgetting about our neighborhoods? And they're right, we're not. And um, you know, we need more police officers in our neighborhoods. They wanna see more police patrols. They wanna see people riding through, not less just walking through. So that's the biggest concern that I have um, getting back to me, public safety, number one big concern that, that's coming back to me. Thank you. Okay, next, uh, Marla. Um, so in knocking door-to-door, uh, -to -door, uh, which I've done uh, quite a bit, uh, along with yeah, the usage of um, social media, and the number one concern that I'm hearing from residents in Ward 3 uh, is a public safety issue. Um, so the level of crime uh, that we have in the city, and also uh, traffic. Uh, and the safety on, on our streets. I know over the past um, several weeks, we've had um, several incidents of uh, cars and running into homes and uh, uh, some, um, some, some uh, pretty um, serious accidents on our streets with um, drivers just speeding down the other roadways. And so um, that's a huge concern for uh, many of our uh, moms and dads where their uh, children are concerned. So the uh, level of crime um, and uh, traffic um, speed on the other roads is uh, one of the other top things uh, that I'm hearing. Uh, the second thing that I'm hearing from a lot of the residents in Ward 3 is really about uh, representation. Um, you know, we have a city, we have elected officials, and there are many uh, residents um, in, 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 in uh, Ward 3 and also around the city who are just uh, concerned about not having enough uh, representation um, in, in um, city government. Okay, Tina? So public safety is a big concern, of course, given the recent spike uh, you know, in violence in the city. Um, when I go out and knock on doors, people are concerned. Um, the other issue is, similar to what Marlon said, is the representation in some of the precincts. And um, folks basically not they don't know much about their city council and what their city council is doing for them. So that feeling of um, needing to be represented. The demographics, like I said, in Brockton have changed tremendously. I raised my kids at Brockton High. Um, they all graduated from there. And the kids at Brockton High now, with the large influx of more immigrant community, certainly has changed a lot. So the folks there need to be educated a bit more on, you know, who they're, who's representing them and what the issues are in the city. Thank you. I have a follow-up to that. Um, you're raising your hand, and my question was going to be, um, you're the current counselor, and representation was mentioned by both of your challenges, so I assume you may want to Definitely, address that. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I do want to follow up on that because, you know, the, one of the things that I've tried to do um, since I've been a city councilor, and that's in the 14th year now, is I've always been available to have uh, ward meetings. Um, I have three, maybe four sometimes a year. Maybe in my hit a year we only have the three, but um, and my ward meetings have been pretty well attended. Um, when I say pretty well attended, when you can get 25, 30, 50 people, 60 even into a uh, school cafeteria, um, that shows good, you know, good people looking to come to find out what the issues are and um, shows that I'm doing my representative work. Now, not everybody knows me, not everybody knows all of us in every ward as well, but the key is with me is I've always reached out, always had ward meetings, I, I've advertised them, whether it be radio, whether it be here, cable, whether it even be buying an ad in the newspaper, and I've always been able to, um, you know, to bring in other department heads to talk different issues that, um, you know, seem to be talked about or what their interests may be. So I've always done my part of reaching out to people, and, and, I, and I think the people know that, and yeah, there's probably going to be a few that may not know me, but that's that's part of the process as well, too. So thank you. I just want to clarify that. Okay, and since you both brought it up, I'll let you have another minute on the issue each. Tina? Do you want me to go? Okay. 
exactly. Go ahead. So the problem with the people that come out to the ward meetings is the same people that come out to the ward meetings. So the people that really, really, that we need to be able to represent the people that have language barriers, have difficulty getting to ward meetings, whether it's because they, they have some kind of disability or whatever, what have you. There has to be a way for us to be able to get out there and um, represent all of the the folks in the ward and not just have these meetings that the same people go to you know uh, the people that I've talked to they don't even know that the meetings exist Reverend Green um, you know again we're I'm kind of uh, sharing the other feedback that I'm getting from um, our voters and I think it's important that we pay close attention to what the other voters are saying um, I understand uh, Councilor Neary, um, you have um, regular uh, ward meetings, which I think is great, is needed, and should absolutely continue um, to, um, to happen. Um, but I'm frankly, I would not be satisfied um, with uh, being in a ward of almost 8,000 uh, registered uh, voters. And I have a ward meeting with um, 25, 30, or 60 of those uh, voters. I would use any means necessary to engage, to reach out to the families in our ward, and to get them to be a part of and to re-engage them in this uh, democratic uh, process. We need to hear from them and to be more informed about their concerns before we make uh, decisions. I'm going to continue this for a minute. I'm going to give you each 30 more seconds. Council. Thank you. First of all, let's get one thing straight. Ward meetings are not mandated. Ward meetings are what the ward council wants to do. It's not something that you're told you have to do when you become a councilor. There are some ward councilors that do not have ward meetings because they feel that there's not a need to unless there's a real appropriate issue that the ward is facing and they want the people to know about it. Now I reach out every way that I can and I disagree with the fact. I always see when I have my ward meetings different people. I, I see you come many times, Reverend. Sure. I've never seen where Tina's come. Now, I mean, I'm not going to go that route, but I know that my ward meetings are, are attended from anywhere from 30 to 50 to 60, 70. You think you're going to get 200 people? You're, you're not going to. You're not going to. I'm sorry to say that, but you're not going to. Time, Reverend. 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. So being in um, elected office is representational. It's about uh, representing the voice of the constituency. And there's really no representation without engagement. And so we have to find a way to engage the um, constituency and to be more informed in terms of what their concerns and thoughts are on the issues in the other city. So again, I would use any means necessary to increase the number of voters at these ward meetings. I understand they're not mandatory, but they're helpful to engage those who are disengaged from the process. Tina, 30 seconds. Uh, again, just I would be more visible, uh, more available. I'm someone that's approachable. I understand the issues because I've lived them. People can relate to me. And um, I feel like I would find ways to engage people other than just the ward meetings uh, for a small number of folks. OK, we're going to move on to the next question. And that would be Steve. Uh, you're, three of you are running for the Ward uh, 3 Council seat, but most of the votes you take on the City Council <clears throat> affect the city as a whole. Uh, if you're elected, would you vote to ignore federal law and make Brockton a sanctuary city? Tina first. I would have to look at... It's, it's, it's very complicated. It's a complex uh, issue. Um, there's a lot of emotion attached to that. We have to look at our population of people and our demographics and we have to do what's best for our constituents. So listening to people, talking to people, going out to see what you know they want uh, is important. Um, it, it, to me it's a very hot topic. Um, there's a lot more, it's very complex and I think that you know we really just need to listen to people and try to understand that Brockton is a very diverse city and we want to not exclude anyone. We have hardworking people here, um, a lot of immigrants that come over and they work hard and pay their taxes, so we really need to 
pay attention to what the people are saying. Even if that means a loss of federal funding? Again, we'd have to really look at it and talk to folks. And th the people that live here are hardworking, taxpaying people. So we want to be able to include everyone, not how exclude do you, how anyone. Do you figure the tax, how, do you, how do you figure that an illegal immigrant is a tax-paying person? People are paying their taxes Unless one way or another. Unless they have a job illegally. Okay. Mm -hmm. People are paying their taxes one way or another, and we're a city of immigrants, and we really have to take that into the account when we make those decisions. Can we go a minute? Okay, so you can't give it a yes or no right now. You wouldn't, you wouldn't give it a yes or no. I think I've answered the question okay. to the best of my ability. Okay, fair enough. Okay, I'm going to do a minute 30. Dennis? No. Why, why would I make Brockton a sanctioned city? I, and I, I've said that. I said that even when this whole discussion started uh, several months ago. And as you know, the ordinance is before the ordinance committee, whether we hear it before the end of uh, our legislative year, uh, and I don't know if that'll happen um, I, at this point in time, I, I know. And no matter how you read it, write it, cross the, the <coughs> T, dot the I, whatever, it would make Brockton a sanctioned city, and I am not going to let my city become a sanctioned city. I've lived here for 63 years of my life, and people came back at me when they heard about this, and they were very, very upset that this could even happen here in the city of Brockton. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere, I think it was in June, July, I thought the SJC made some type of a court ruling. I don't have it in front of me, but I thought something was made in regards to sanctioned city. So you got my answer, Steve. No. Okay. Okay. Reverend Green. Um, Brockton is a very uh, diverse uh, city. There is no question about that. Um, immigrants are important to this country and to the city of Brockton as well. We love immigrants and we should do everything within our ability uh, to make sure that we uh, protect the immigrant families uh, that we have in the city of Brockton. And there are many um, different ways that we can do that. I certainly would not um, vote for a measure that would jeopardize uh, the funding of the city. The last thing that we need is to lose another dollar in the city of Brockton. And so I would not uh, put forth a measure, approve a measure that would put us at jeopardy. But I think I'm there other ways that we can show our um, support to the other immigrant uh, community, uh, Mark. One thing that I would not um, support is I would not um, support using our uh, law enforcement officials to, uh, to enforce uh, federal laws. Okay. Uh, next question would be Shana. Yes. Um, so, uh, okay, well, this, it's the same question for the three of you, but I need to ask it differently for uh, Council Anieri. So um, I guess I'm, I'm asking, what is one major accomplishment that you wish to execute if elected as city councilor, and what is one major accomplishment that you are uh, particularly proud of in Ward 3? So we will start with uh, Marlon. One major thing um, that I would hope to accomplish yes. as a um, councilor? Yes. Um, I think one uh, major thing I would like to work with the the, uh, the council of the city and the school department on um, is the funding formula for the other public school uh, system in Brockton. This has been a long-standing um, fight for us where our kids, our families, uh, the city uh, just isn't getting their um, fair um, share of the funding from the other state. And so I would certainly uh, love to work with the, uh, the school committee and the city to um, have that uh, formula uh, revised where uh, we are no longer at a disadvantage. Thank, you. Thank uh, you. Next would be Tina. So I have many passions, so it's hard to pick one of them. Uh, definitely education is key. Um, not only educating our students, but educating our parents. Again, I go back to the changing demographics in the city. If we want a great city, we have to educate parents and have to teach them how to be more involved in the schools. We can't have great schools without great PTAs, without parents being involved. That's what I did with my children. That's what made them successful. 
Um, they all three graduated from Brockton High and they all went on to higher education because I was that parent that was involved. And so I feel like education is key, elementary, high school, also educating the parents, helping them to better their education so that they can get jobs and that they can contribute to the city. So that's one of my biggest. Um, so why not run for a school committee if education is your focus? Because I feel like there's other passions that I have, like public safety and other things that I want to do that I would be best served on the council. Okay, thank you. Dennis. Thank you. Uh, there's so many things that could be, uh, could be uh, said and, and, and given into this particular answer of some of my uh, you know, accomplishments, naturally, from my many years of being uh, the city council of Ward 3. But I think the greatest accomplishment uh, I had was just a few years back that uh, I was under the uh, Belzotti administration. Uh, when uh, Mayor Belzotti, I, uh, Mary Walgren, uh, uh, from the Economic Development uh, Plan, um, she was involved with the econo Economic Development Plan back then, and we were able to um, be instrumental in bringing the uh, Bonatti Auto Group um, to the city of Brockton, a big automobile dealership. Been many, many years since you saw a new dealership come into the city of Brockton, but it was going to take a piece of desolate land that had sat there uh, for so long. Uh, it was the American Brush Building, and it sat there, decayed, and it just it had to go away, and, and uh, the price was right for the for the Bonatti Group to come in and purchase it. Um, it's there now still, but it's it's under it's under a different uh, name because of their process just went in a different direction. But yeah. um, that was that was a, it, to me it was it was important because I was a part of that whole step with the mayor, and and I knew what was going on from day one, and I was there right right to the opening. So to me that you know I, I was very proud of that moment. You know, that I cleaned that corner up. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all. Uh, next question is from Steve Foote. Uh, this is a general question about the city. Uh, why doesn't a city the size of Brockton have a movie theater complex? I mean, do you think we need one? And if so, what would you do as a counselor to try to get us one? Okay, start with Tina. So that's a great question. A lot of people ask that question, along with why don't we have a nice lounge or you know, uh, places with more activities for people to attract folks into the city. So people are concerned about these things and I would work with the council. Um, I'm not, you know, a, you know, I don't know the numbers, uh, so I'd have to learn. Like I said, I'm not a politician, I'm a nurse. I'm someone that cares about the city. I'm a community activist. So there are things that I would have to learn about budgets and numbers. Um, but I know that it's a huge concern for my children especially. They all grew up here and went to school here, but they left when they got their higher education because there's not much for them to do in the city. So we need to be able to build, uh, you know, ha attract our youth to keep them here in the city so that they can give back and work here and contribute. Thank you. Uh, Reverend Green. So I think this is a, um, this is a uh, question uh, kind of in the larger uh, context of economic development for the city of Brockton and developing ways to attract businesses to the other city. Um, I know um, there are a number of uh, challenges um, that are important to um, economic development. Crime is one of those challenges in getting uh, the the, uh, the crime rate under control for the other city. Um, and also parking is certainly an issue for um, a lot of firms and businesses in looking to um, establish their uh, business in the, uh, the city of Brockton. Um, I, think, I think we're on the right track uh, in terms of economic um, development and the plans for downtown Brockton. I think if we continue along this um, path and leverage the other resources and the availability of space and buildings that we have in the other city, we can certainly move um, towards that and we can see something um, like a movie theater if that's the um, desire of the community and if there's a partner who is willing to, uh, to come in and to do that. Council Ian Harry. Uh, you know, I think a part of that uh, whole urban renewal um, um, economic development uh, plan that's going on right now, um, you know, with Main Street, I think has it with the, a movie theater coming, but still, um, we've gone a long, long time without having a movie theater in the city, and we should be ashamed of ourselves. And I will tell you right now, there are some nice locations right down in the south end of the city, South Main Street, 
further down from where uh, where I work at uh, at the dealership. Um, you've got some vacant spots down there, and I don't know why we haven't really done anything to try to um, create you know uh, an aspect of, of putting a movie theater there. To be truthful with you, and you also have the Shaw's building that's been sitting there um, closed now for I don't know eight years, which is which is sad. Which is half in West Bridgewater, half in Brockton, and why we couldn't even get together with West Bridgewater and do something. It, it is too bad that the city of Brockton doesn't have a, uh, have a movie theater. It'd be nice to have our own here with the reclining chairs like they have in Randolph, I agree. Um, and it is, people have mentioned that to me many, many times, and, and I don't know why, we, why no one's picked up the plate with it. I really don't know. Okay, next question is Shane Barnes. Uh, okay, this is a group question again. Um, what are your feelings about term limits for city councilors? Okay, that would be first in Councilor Neary. I, Shane, I really haven't given that much thought. Um, you know, you've stayed around for four years, and, and I've been uh, 14 years and, and going for 16 years. Um, I don't know, uh, do we really need to have term limits for city council? Um, I, I don't know. I think what you might need to do and would, would be nice to look at is maybe making it so the terms were a little bit longer. You know, so you'd have a three for mayor, three for city council, three for school committee, because you know soon to get elected, and you know soon to just turn around and start to learn the process, and especially if you're brand new, and you were brand new, and a lot of the people that are running today, they don't know the process. It's more to what you know what it is, and uh, um, I'd rather see something more like that, you know, a three, three, and a three. I think that's what we should be working on, to be truthful with you, than just have a limitation. Um, because sometimes the limitation, for whatever reason, just never gets voted into play, you know. And as you know, one time the mayor's term was for four years, and that went back and forth, up and down for so many years, from mm -hmm. two to four, two to four. But um, I'd rather see it more, you know, in a three, three, and three for the elected officials. Thank you. Tina? For me, it's not so much the term limits. For me, is holding folks accountable. So we talk about all these things that we want to get done, <coughs> but then nothing gets done and we're still talking about the things that we want to get done like we just talked about right now. So holding folks accountable, um, I feel like more and more people are learning that that's what they need to do to hold their people accountable. If you're not working for the people in your ward, then you have to go. So that's, that's, that's to me, is just educating people to hold their city councils accountable for the things that are going on in the city. If you're not working for me, then I'm not going to vote for you the next time. So it's not so much term limits for me, it's more accountability. That would be a term limit, people <laughs> holding voters accountable. Well, in a sense, right, but right. you know what I mean. I just don't think that we should you know, set a two-year limit or a three-year limit. I think we need to do the work, and if we're not working, then you know, folks need to get out there and, and vote or not. Reverend Green. Thank you. So I'm indifferent where um, term limits are concerned. Uh, I, on, on one hand, I, um, I don't see an argument or a reason for uh, term limit to impose one. Um, and at the same, on the other hand, um, yeah, you know, I mean, there could be reasons, but um, I'm, I, I'm indifferent. I do not have an argument to put them forth to say that we need one in place. What I think is more important is where the, uh, the city council is concerned um, is to have uh, better um, checks and balances in place for the, um, the city council. Um, so I think that for the other uh, council, we should have a stronger uh, conflict of interest uh, policy in place, um, disclosures. Um, I know um, there are some questions about uh, nepotism in the other city. Um, uh, among the, the uh, city workers. Those, I think, uh, those are more important issues, I think, where the other uh, city is uh, concerned and where the council is concerned. I think on those, um, those are more important issues, uh, more so than uh, term limits. Okay, thank you. Next question is from Steve Foote. Uh, the, the council's explored using the uh, MWRA as a secondary water source and found that it's extremely costly. Uh, would you be in favor, would you support the mayor's proposals to buy the Aquaria water facility and cure Brockton's water compliance problem? Marlon first. Um, no, I would not um, support the, uh, the purchase of the um, diesel uh, plant. Um, and I would not do that for a number of reasons. Um, number one, it is a failing business. From the beginning, it's been a failing business. And I do not agree with our city purchasing a failing business 
without a comprehensive business plan to turn this plant around. There are a number of questions where the plant is concerned. How much is, is it going to cost the city uh, to operate on a annual basis? How much is it going to cost us to, to, um, to upgrade this plant? How are we going to market uh, this plant and, and to get the customer base so that this business is profitable and we're not stuck with a failing business. So I would not uh, support that at all. Um, I know it's been stated that uh, buying into the, uh, the NWRA is expensive. How much more expensive is it uh, for the other city? This uh, desalt plant has been around for many, many years and we've been going uh, back and forth with this. And I think the time is now for us to put that to rest. No on the, on the other plant. Dennis. Well, we just had the uh, MWRA before us not too uh, long ago, just a few weeks ago, just for an informational um, session. But, uh, um, I mean, I have to follow the steps. I, I guess I have to say it, but I have to follow the steps with what Reverend Green is saying because, uh, you know, when and if it comes uh, to the city council and comes before me, I, I have no intentions at this particular time of uh, voting in favor to buy, uh, you know, the desalination plant. Um, first of all, the taxpayer is already paying enough with it. So with that being said, and I know we're paying enough of a tough bill right now, I'd rather just be keep paying the tough bill, get over with the contract we're with, and, and then we'd be done with it. Because if not, you're going to have to go out to bond for, we say, $78 million, But probably by the time you're figuring all the other costs, you're probably going to go out to bond about $108 million. And, and what we're going to have is a $1.7 million savings. And, and the mayor makes that sound good. Of course it sounds good because he likes to spend money. And he needs the $1.7 million to spend it in some other area. And then for me, I just, I'm not going to put it to the taxpayers again. They went through it before I became a counselor. That was a big issue. Just when I went on the council, that was just an ending issue about the situation we're in. And I cannot foresee myself even going forth with something like that. It's ludicrous. To me, it is anyways. Tina. I'd have to agree with the Reverend and um, Councillor Aneri on that. My other concern is for safety. Again, being a nurse, I have safety concerns, uh, environmental um, safety concerns when it comes to, to that. So um, I'd have to say no, that I wouldn't be for a uh, power plant right now. Okay, thank you. We don't have time for my favorite question, but we need to go to closing statements at this point in time. And the order that was drawn was this, um, uh, Tina would be first. You have up to two minutes. Okay. So again, my name is Tina Cardoso. I am a nurse by trade. I am a leader in the community. I'm the president of a nonprofit organization that seeks to help folks in the community and educate them around mental illness. I raised three beautiful kids here in Brockton who all went on to do well. My oldest is getting her PhD right now. My second daughter is a teacher in Boston. I care about this city. I want to help out my folks. I want to be that council that's visible. I'm approachable. I'm someone that uh, folks can relate to. I have uh, much, I don't have uh, experience as a politician, but I have life experience to offer the people in my ward. And I will do the best I can to deal with those issues that the people in Ward 3 care about, like public safety and education, um, and just be available for folks um, to educate them on what the issues are in the city. Thank you, Tina. Uh, next, Reverend Green. Hi, I'm Reverend Green, uh, Marlon Green. And again, I have the honor of being a candidate for um, City Council to represent Ward 3. I've lived in the city for 15 years. My wife and I are raising our two boys, 8 and 11 years old, and they're both um, students in the uh, Brockton um, Public Schools, of which we are extremely proud of. I'm an immigrant. I'm originally from uh, Jamaica. Uh, moved to Boston and then uh, moved to Brockton uh, 15 years ago uh, with my family. I chose Brockton to be my home and I'm 100% uh, vested in making Brockton a better city for my sons, for your sons and your daughters um, as well. I bring 15 years of church ministry experience and throughout those um, 15 years, I've had the wonderful opportunity of working in several different communities across New England, 
bringing people, families, community groups, and churches together at the table for the enrichment and the empowerment of our young people. And I hope to bring that experience and that skill set to the City Council to better serve you and your families in Ward 3. I also have 15 years of experience in research in the healthcare industry and managing multi-million dollar research budgets. I hope to bring the experience and the skill set of doing due diligence, careful research, um, and employing an evidence-based approach to problem solving. I hope to bring that to the City Council to help to make our city our home. I encourage you to join me on September 19th, and let's vote and make Ward 3 go green again. I'm number one on the ballot. Thank you. And uh, Councilor Neary. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. And again, I want to thank uh, BCA, BCA and the uh, staff here for uh, hosting us this evening. I want to thank Steve as uh, one of our uh, persons asking the question. Uh, and I want to thank my counselor, Shana Bonds, uh, for being a part of the process. But I also want to thank her for her years of service. We appreciate what you've done as a city councilor. You've done an awful lot. You should be proud of the fact that I know you're moving on, and I hope your endeavors are uh, uh, this is a challenging, Shane, I really do. But I wish you the very, very best of luck. So best to you. Again, my name is Dennis Aneary, City Councilor of Ward 3, have been for the last 14 years, and I'm proud of it. I've served the people of, the, of Ward 3 for, for those 14 years and have always been available to the people of this ward. I don't know of any time when I was never available. I'm out there morning, day, and night. To the left and the right of me, don't realize, and Shane knows, what it is to be a City Councilor. As I keep saying, it's a part-time job, part-time pay, 24-7. I want to see how they perform the first time when the phone call comes in at 1 in the morning when you got a constituent saying, I got a noisy neighborhood. How do you like sleeping? And I can't. You have to get up and you have to do something about it. Those are the things that you do as a ward councilor. Those are the things that I've been doing for the last 14 years. Those are the things that I will continue to do for the next 14 years. Now, I know there's some people in the city that like to see me gone, and I know this particular people that have already made their choice of who should be the next Ward 3 councilor. It's not going to be. It will be me because I will be out there working hard and diligently for the next few days. I need votes for September 19th. I'll get my votes for November 7th, and I will continue to represent the people of Ward 3 the way I've been doing it to the very best of my ability. And I can't say enough about the people of Ward 3. Hadn't been born there, come back here, worked with them. It's a tremendous, tremendous ward. It really is. So with that being said, please, September 19th, Tuesday, that's primary day. Election starts at 7 in the morning, closes at 8. I ask the voters that have been voting for me for the last 14 years to please come out and renominate me. Thank you. Okay, and thank you to all three candidates thank you. Thank you. for being here. Um, we're going to keep everybody in their place. I want to thank um, my panelists, Steve Foote and Shana Barnes. And again, thank you, Shana, for your service. Uh, thank my staff and crew. But most of all, September 19th, we do not want a repeat of what happened in past years. We do not want 4%, 5%, 10%. We want to show Brockton pride. We want everybody to go out and vote for the city councils, three races that are out there, the mayor's race, and then we'll get to Councilor at Large and other ward races uh, for the November 7th election. So keep tuned to uh, Brockton Community Access, channels 9, 12, and 98. But most of all, do your duty and vote. Good night.